Today I'm going to talk about death. Not death so much in a theological sense, but the interesting way that people shamelessly exploit death in pursuance of political argumentation and point scoring. As always, I'm appealing to conservative traditional values and especially in our modern degenerate culture, what people rightfully describe as the abortion holocaust. Now, all these discussions about abortion proceed on the basis of a society morally accepting the routine practice of abortion as if you're having a tooth out, for example. Of course, abortion has always existed, but not on the level of public acceptation, having no regard for the morality of the practice. Some years ago, people were utilising an expression called the culture of death. This culture of death was a rather curious phenomenon, particularly connected with left liberal progressivist causes related to sexual liberation, which could be summarised as make love, not life. Later on, I'll be discussing a changed perspective I've always had on questions of pro-war and anti-war, so-called. And of course, we all remember the slogan, make love, not war. But make love, not life was all about, first of all, self-indulgent sexuality, which completely circumvents the fundamental meaning and purpose of sexuality. For example, in sexually licentious modern culture, the female bosom is nothing but a sex object and the primordial purpose is breastfeeding children. Breastfeeding went out the window, but the breast remained as a sex object. And then there's homosexuality, which cannot give rise to offspring. If the woman gets pregnant, there's always abortion to get around that. Murder, which dispenses with the problem, which is to say another human life. To say nothing of AIDS, which came about as the direct result of the improper use of body parts for purposes for which they were not designed and has killed millions of people as a result of the AIDS crisis. It's all about lifelessness and or death, which in terms of biblical morality seems curiously fitting. So in short, Western culture is all about sex, but not procreation, and indeed sex which leads directly to death. For someone like me who believes in demonic forces at work in the world, conspiring to destroy the human race, this seems all rather fitting. In left-wing progressivist politics, we are continually assailed by assertions and even statistics about death that represent compelling arguments about a particular point of view or political point scoring. And I would label this as playing the death card, which frequently brings in the points that I was making before about sexual morality and, and relativities concerning our moral priorities. One case that comes immediately to mind is the oft-repeated assertion that the terrorists entered the village and they killed so many old men, women and children. What happened to women's equality, I ask? My particular favourite has been what they call honour killings carried out in traditional Islamic countries where the usual scenario is of rampant traditional morality coming into play where a father or an older brother will murder a young woman member of the family who has committed sexual indiscretions and shamed the family and contravened 
traditionalistic Islamic prohibitions against illicit sexual activity, a practice which incidentally may well precede Islam and represent tribal custom in the Middle East that is not, strictly speaking, an Islamic but just a deep-seated historical cultural tradition, another weapon to beat Islam over the head with. And there is the recent case in Iran of the young woman who was, we think, uh, beaten to death by the morality police. Yes, there really are morality police in Iran, for better or worse. And on the subject of playing the death card, this issue is obviously being exploited to overthrow the regime. But getting back to moral priorities here, there is this huge disparity between the odd honour killing of a young woman for reasons that, according to traditional culture, may be way more justified than anybody in the Western world would be willing to even remotely entertain, by comparison with an astonishing presence of death in the Western world, which people are completely and willfully blinded to. I have already referred to millions of people who have died as a result of rated what I might refer to as morally anarchic promotion of the lifestyle of homosexuality, which has led to predictably fatal diseases like AIDS, where people just obstinately ignore the moral questions surrounding these deaths. Left-wingers are manic about pursuing anti-smoking philosophy, where they are way more concerned about their political activist credentials than the actual welfare of people. Now, smoking may be an unwise choice when it comes to feeling socially at ease or gaining acceptance in a crowd, but the priority of the social crusaders is to micromanage people's lives. That's what really gives them a kick, but who completely ignore the health dangers of the homosexual lifestyle, which would be every bit as likely to lead to death as smoking would be, you never hear about that because it doesn't suit their ideological worldview. Conservatives frequently cite figures of tens of millions of innocent unborn children murdered through abortion over the decades, and not just in the Western world. Abortion has been rampant in the countries of the former Soviet Union and countries like China, where the numbers are even more staggering. But those sort of numbers tend to make your eyes glaze over. One could observe that Hitler killed six million Jews, and we never hear the end of that. As some great stain on history, Stalin killed five million Ukrainians in a man-made famine in the 1930s. But it wasn't six million, so he must be a pretty good guy. But I came up with a statistic recently that brings these figures a bit more into the realm of more everyday experience, and that is that some 2,000 abortions are carried out every day in the United States, and in Australia, that's about 200 innocent unborn children murdered every day, all because it's carried out, you might say, in secret, it's not a reality that confronts ordinary people in their day-to-day -day life. If 200 young kids were killed in a tragic accident at some primary school, it would be called the greatest tragedy in Australian history. But wait, the same thing happened the day before. When are we going to do something about this? What is going on? What's going on with this country? But the same thing happened the day before that. And uh, actually... It's going to happen again tomorrow. This entire country would go into meltdown. In the 1960s in Australia, a little boy went missing in the bush and the country was just transfixed. Can we find this boy before he succumbs? They even recorded a song about this that was a smash hit. And sure enough, 
he was rescued. One single child, not like the 200 children being murdered today and will be murdered tomorrow. So let's return to the honour killings. How many young women have been murdered in honour killings today? The numbers annually are something equivalent to the number of abortions performed per day in the United States. A huge proportion are black. Where are the race crusaders? A huge proportion are baby girls. Where are the feminist crusaders? And even the war in Ukraine considered to be an outrage. There is much destruction of cities and infrastructure. But the death toll among civilians is in the order of some 6,000, probably understated, but nowhere approaching the aforesaid abortion deaths. 6,000, that's only three days worth of abortion in the United States. Six million Jews dead in the Holocaust is only one-tenth of the number of innocent unborn children murdered during the 50 or so years since Roe v. Wade and each one of those children aborted was just as much of a human being with the potential to live out a normal human life whose life has been cut short, every bit as much of a human being as every one of those dead Ukrainians or dead Jews and people have the gall to be outraged by death and destruction through warfare and yet completely ignore the death and destruction visited upon innocent unborn children in their millions. And there is a case to be answered here about our priorities and values, about how we morally judge things. Indeed, such questions as the morality of war in my younger years, during the Vietnam War, I disputed the very notion that fallible beings were really in any position to take the high moral ground about war. I was horrified by reckless claims that any human being could divorce themselves from the problem of war via the application of some pacifist political ideology, we're just not that perfect. People, in my view, had the temerity to claim that we must have peace at any price and they would renounce what? The war to free the slaves, the war against Hitler, resisting the Mongols, taking your city and killing everything that moves, including animals and even insects. Yes, this was indeed a position of abstract theorising, entirely disconnected from reality. I remember the spectacle of Labour politicians who had been at the forefront of the anti-war movement, tearfully pledging support as ministers of the Australian government for the international campaign against Saddam Hussein in the first Gulf War the emptiness of their anti-war philosophy was on full display. When the Ukraine war started up, there didn't appear to be much justification for the war, but I was still scandalised by the incredibly trite anti-war feeling people brought to bear on the issue, as if it could be addressed purely on the level of shallow moralising and paradoxically, it brought to mind something that I'd been thinking about for most of my adult life, which came out of the phony, superficial posturing of the supposedly morally outraged. It was the supposedly my country right or wrong sentiment. I often used to think about that as a valid proposition that people were making this erroneous calculation. And I realised at the time of the Ukraine war just how much of a straw man this argument was. And that in reality, countries rarely, if ever, go to war 
from a position of complete moral wrongdoing, there's almost always a justification for war from some patriotic perspective, that the war is almost always carried out in the interests of the nation as a whole on at least some level or other. My father served in the war and he developed a very pronounced hatred for the Japanese based on his own war experiences. But I remember him once saying that Japan really had no choice but to go to war as it had no resources, little in the way of food resources to feed its people. And if he wasn't qualified to speak on the subject, I don't know who was. So my country, right or wrong, was really just an empty bit of sloganeering that people in the real world don't ever really adhere to. And that when it comes to playing the death card, which anti-war philosophy plays to the hilt, that the stark moral divide really isn't there. The war in Ukraine, an evil act of aggression by the monster Putin. But could this man be a heaven-sent corrective to the moral degeneracy of the Western world and Ukraine in particular? Is it the biblical teaching that war is a punishment upon nations for their sins? The French, the British, the Japanese, the Chinese, the Russians and the Ukrainians have all suffered warfare and tribulation visited upon them. People in the West, in a spirit of moral indignation, condemn Putin and they do this with a fair amount of ignorance about what's really going on in this conflict. Few people realise that Vladimir Putin is making war against degenerate Western society. I am not justifying Russian imperialism, but we at least need to know the underlying facts and background to what is happening. Commentators portray Putin as ex-KGB communist. No, this is not correct. He is invoking Russian imperialism and from the position of the Russian Orthodox religious mentality. Putin is Russian Orthodox with traditionalist values. He put out a video condemning Western culture as degenerate and he views himself in some respects as some kind of avenging angel. People in the West are ignorant of the historical connection between Ukraine and Russia. Putin sees Ukraine as part of historic Russia and feels justified in invading the place and bringing it back under Russian control. Not unlike the way Australia might feel about regaining control over Tasmania if, for example, it went its own way and started cozying up to the Chinese. Now, that's only a very approximate analogy, but you've also got to look at the fact that Russia has been invaded from the West at least three times in 200 years by Napoleon in World War I and by Hitler and in numerous conflicts with Sweden over the centuries, all threatening Russia from the West and rolling across the great flat Ukrainian plain right up to Russia's front door and much in the same way as America would not tolerate Russian ballistic missiles in Cuba during the Cuban Missile Crisis as a matter of principle, so Putin does not countenance the militarisation of the Ukraine in the form of participation in NATO and bringing NATO forces directly to the border of Russia, an alliance, which I might remind you, was an anti-Russian alliance back in the Cold War, and is Putin's invasion of the Ukraine all that much different 
from JFK's threatened invasion of Cuba for a very similar reason and lauding of Kennedy and the Americans in this episode versus the complete vilification of Putin over Ukraine. Now, at all points, I want you to keep in mind those 6,000 dead Ukrainians compared to the millions of innocent, unborn victims of the abortion apocalypse, as I call it. Is Putin the scourge of a degenerate Ukrainian society? Ukrainians played a pivotal role in the extermination of Jews in Eastern Europe during the war. Is he the scourge of the degenerate Western world, an avenging, destroying angel from heaven? And just consider the fact that we rightly condemn ancient societies that practice child sacrifice with complete horror and disgust as does the Bible. And do we not practice child sacrifice, children offered up on the altar of materialistic concerns, greed and convenience? Are 6,000 Ukrainians adequate recompense for what the Western world inflicts via its warped moral values? Abortion is reprehensibly treated as birth control rather than a moral issue about the termination of a human life. And call me unworldly, but in 2022, just how exactly does a young single woman manage to get pregnant when she doesn't want to? The pill came in in the 1960s and I know that birth control methods don't always work, but young women seem to get pregnant when they don't want to. Today, not much different to the way it was back in the old days. I might be an old fogey, but how is that? That does not make much sense to me. Playing the death card is a shallow argument indeed. And returning to John F. Kennedy, was he not the hero? of the Cuban Missile Crisis because he was prepared to invade Cuba and nuke Moscow for a principle in order to prevail in the Cuban Missile Crisis. Kennedy had to convince everybody, including the Russians, that he was prepared to fight a nuclear World War III and Abraham Lincoln the greatest of US presidents who preserved the Union at the time of the Civil War. He was prepared to fight a war in which 600,000 young American boys lost their lives in a war that he was prepared to fight for a principle. Is Putin really that different? I don't know, but I do ask the question, and that is not a question put across in this form anywhere in the Western world. And when it comes to JFK nuking Russia or hundreds of thousands of dead young Americans, think again about the abortion holocaust and think about the moral judgments we apply in all of these cases. Is any human being in a position to play the death card? Now, Russia too has abortion albeit with figures declining under Putin because he wants to boost the population of Mother Russia and it will face condemnation of its own in its time. I am not portraying Putin as a righteous avenging angel, but a rod of correction nevertheless. Where does the moral compass lie in these matters? When I hear left-wingers play the death card about children suffering and dying and winning arguments and swaying people to their point of view. I just think of those daily abortion statistics. They jolt me back to reality.